your teeth still look anybody, like mine. Anybody, anybody that's talking to me and you knows that my teeth don't look like yours. Your teeth has spaces, which makes you miss mama. Hey guys, it's Aaron. Welcome back to the house where we talk news, celebrities, and hot topics. Today is going to be a great video because we got some interesting things to talk about. Y'all, I actually haven't been on here in two, three days because the coronavirus, of course, has taken up all the news and the headlines. That's all anybody is talking about. And to be honest, I'm kind of over it at this point because it's affected what we got over here at the house of Aaron. But you know, I scrattled and scrapped up some news stories to talk about for you guys today. So on today's episode, we are going to be talking about that Real Housewives of Potomac trailer. And all I have to say is, the whole trailer was better than the whole season of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Kourtney Kardashian, she has quit the uh, Keeping Up show, okay? So we are going to get into some things. And Rihanna is a liar, okay? We're going to talk about it all. If you haven't already, like this video and go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's get straight into the video. All right, you guys, we back with a new video. Okay, my tongue uh, is blue because I had this um, blue raspberry freeze from Taco bell y'all it was so good and so tasty like if you have not tried um taco bell's freeze thingies they slushies oh my god you need to do so because they're so good and during the summertime when it's time to get lit and turn up i'm definitely going to be putting some vodka in my taco bell slushies so yeah i'm gonna have a hot girl summer but let's get into today's video okay so the real housewives of potomac to me personally is the most interesting real housewives show Okay, it's the most interesting section of the franchise because to me, their drama has just surpassed anything that has happened on Housewives, Beverly Hills, New Jersey, New York. I mean, every season it gets better and better and better and better. And I feel like Housewives of Atlanta, they've kind of plateaued a bit. After the whole Candy, Portia, and Phaedra sex dungeon, she tried to drug me and rape me storyline, um, the show has been on a decline because after you reach that level of drama, okay, where can you go from there? okay you can't get no dramatic than this bitch tried to drug me and take me back to her sex dungeon so i kind of feel like um you know housewives of atlanta has plateaued but baby okay let's get into this rohop <laughs> trailer okay potomac they are on a different level but specifically i want to speak about this fight that's going to happen between monique and candace okay so i have three favorites on the show if you don't know already okay it's candace i like karen huger and i also really like monique okay those are my three favorites i love those three women i think karen is like the nini of the group she's the queen she's the matriarch like she gets all the girls in line and she's in charge of everybody candace is the baby she's kind of like the portia of the group and then you have um monique who to me she is just a very classy upstanding mother mom she's a badass bitch like monique is that bitch okay when monique first came on the show i did not like her but now i really fuck with monique because i think she's fabulous with that being said we see on here that my two favorites candace and monique are really going to get into it and it's going to turn into a whole physical altercation all right, y'all, so check this clip out. I'm going to ask y'all in my house to lower your voices. Do you want me to Do you want me to Get off of me. Stop. Get off of me. I by no means want to be near you. So you saw that clip of Monique, okay? She's finna drag Candace, okay? She's finna drag Candace across that barn or farm or wherever the hell they was at. I feel like these Potomac girls, they're always at a farm. Like you would think that they lived down south in the country. In Atlanta and Dallas, they don't even be at farms and barn houses, but in Maryland, they do. And I'm just like, what do y'all got going on up there? But anyways, yeah, you saw Candace and Monique really going at it and Candace wanted all the smoke, okay? She said, bitch, you said you were gonna drag me pregnant and all. Well, now you're not pregnant, so let's go, okay? Candace was not playing. And Monique took her up on her offer. Monique was like, bitch, I got you, checkmate. So I am super excited for this season because I know it's been to be filled with drama and fights and I'm all the way here for it. But who I'm not here for is Miss Giselle Bryant, okay? Giselle is my least favorite housewife on Potomac, okay? Giselle and uh, Robin. And we're gonna get to Robin S real quick, okay? Later on down the line. But Giselle in those clips, you can see her saying, um, you know, we have been able to be above the stereotype as black women. And I guess she's alluding to the fact that when people see black women on a reality television show, on national television, I guess people just assume that it's just gonna be 
Nuck if you buck. We've seen not a lot of good representations of black people on reality television. But I will say that white people, white people of all different socioeconomic classes, they fight on television as well. So what we not gonna do is act like black people the only people on TV that fight, okay? With that being said, Giselle is kinda correct in a way by saying we've been able to be above physical violence. We've been able to, you know, really disagree and resolve issues without it ever involving a punch or a kick, okay? Like how we saw on the Kardashians last night, okay? We saw Kim karate chop Courtney's ass and I was all the way here for it. And then you saw, um, what's that bitch name? Courtney, okay? She dug all of her nails into Kim's head and I was here for it. We're gonna talk about the Kardashians right after this. Giselle could not wait until Monique um, actually punched somebody so that she could exile her from the whole group, okay? Giselle has never liked Monique. And what's gonna happen, as far as what I can see by this trailer, it looks like Monique is finna sucker punch uh, Candace, um, and Giselle is gonna use Monique being violent as a way to kick her off the show, as a way to rally up the girls and be like, we don't wanna film with you, we don't wanna be around you because you're violent. Now, I don't know about you and me, but personally, I don't like violence. I'm not a violent person. The way I live my life, I like it peaceful, okay? I like to live a happy, peaceful, loving, nonviolent life. That's just personally for me. But at the same time, you're on The Real Housewives, okay? Let's get real. You are on Bravo and you are on a reality television show, okay? There's levels to this shit, okay? There are levels. You got the VH1 loving hip hop type of ratchet fighting reality TV. And then you have Bravo, which is a bit more classier, okay? It's a bit more tasteful, but Bravo is still not above reproach. A bitch can still get it on Bravo, okay? You saw Portia drag Kenya's ass off that couch, okay? You're not above reproach, baby girl, okay? You can still get it being on Bravo or not. And I say that the same. Giselle, you a hating ass bitch. You're just a hater, baby doll, because you have been waiting for the moment to try to rally up the girls and kick Monique off the show because you're jealous. Giselle has been jealous of Monique since Monique got on the show. And you're probably asking, well, what is Giselle jealous of? Well, Monique has a husband that loves her. Monique has beautiful children. And Monique is rich as hell. Have you seen that mansion that she films in every day? Like, Monique is rich, she got a man, and she has a family. That's exactly everything that Giselle wants. Therefore, Giselle is jealous of Monique and she wants her off the show. It reminds me of the relationship that Kenya has had with Portia for all of these years. When Kenya and Portia first got on the show, I believe that Kenya didn't want to F with Portia from the very beginning because Portia had the dream life. She had a man who loved her, who was an ex-football player and had plenty of money. They lived in a beautiful mansion and she was living the life of luxury. Kenya was jealous of that because Kenya's life was never uh, like a fairy tale like that okay she actually had to grind and hustle for everything that she had hence why Kenya doesn't get along with Tanya because she sees Tanya in the same light as Portia you know Tanya has come into her existence by you know getting with Paul who has a lot of money Kenya does not like women who get their bread from men. And the thing that I have to say about that is that we all are gonna make it in this world by someone else or by our own means. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Just because you had to scrape and come from the bottom up don't mean that I have to do the same thing. Some people, they're just gonna get it how they live it, okay? You get it by working hard. I got it by marrying a man. Guess what? We all got money, we're all fabulous, and let's all uplift and encourage each other to be our best selves, okay? So Kenya and Giselle are the biggest haters on the Bravo platform. I said what I said, it is what it is. If you shape like a beanbag, you shape like a beanbag. All right, but that's all that I pretty much had to say about the Potomac Housewives. I mean, we saw Jamal Bryan, I guess he is, um, you know, trying to get back together with Giselle. And all I have to say is, I kind of don't want this to happen. Only because I feel like Giselle is only doing this because she's lonely. But not only that, I feel like Giselle is thirsty as hell and she would use any type of opportunity to capitalize off of it. And I feel like if anything ever happens uh, where she is not on Potomac, she will try to marry that Jamal man um, who is now the new pastor of New Birth Baptist Church in Lathonia, Georgia. Okay, shout out to them. Move down here to Atlanta and try to be an Atlanta housewife. And I'm not down for it, okay? If Giselle ever joined the Real Housewives of Atlanta, I would quit watching because I just 
just can't do her. I just cannot do her. She's a baby Kenya number two and I cannot do it, okay? Junior Kenya, stay up there in Maryland because we don't want you down here. I did want to say that um, they need to fire Robin, okay? Because now they have this new girl um, on here. She's dark skinned, she's beautiful, she's tall, she's a doctor and I'm all the way here for it, okay? Um, and there's just no need for Robin. Um, I guess the only need for her is to just be Giselle's best friend, but at the same time, Robin, you're not really bringing much to the show. You've been chasing after this man for what, five seasons? And we're tired of it. Like, if y'all not married and got the ring on and living in a happy home by now, Juan don't want you, <laughs> okay? That is what it is. Honestly, he can do better than Robin. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I can see why the white man wanted to suck uh, Juan off because, baby, um, who wouldn't? But anyways, let's move on. Okay, so let's talk about the Kardashians. So the Kardashians came on last night. The first thing that I noticed was that the show comes on Thursday nights now instead of Sunday nights. And I'm thinking to myself, I mean, why would they do that? Well, probably because they were getting killed in the ratings by Sunday night football. They were getting killed in the ratings by Housewives. They were being killed in the ratings by anything else that's happening on television on Sunday night. Um, and people don't really watch the Kardashians like that anymore, unless Courtney is really getting after that ass uh, when it comes to Kim, or if Jordan and Tristan are fucking up the whole family dynamic. Other than that, we really don't care to see the keeping up with the Kardashian show no more. Um, and now they're in season 18 and it's just like, we really just gonna watch y'all eat salads for another season? Like, I am so not here for it. Um, i rather watch Kylie Jenner's vlogs on YouTube than watch Keeping Up. Like, her vlogs of her just going to work every day is so much more interesting than anything that is on the E! Network. With that being said, last night they had their premiere episode for season 18, and it was actually pretty interesting. Like, I'm not gonna even flex, I was actually very much into it, only because I haven't seen the show in a really long time. So it was kinda like a, aw, oh, this is really nice to see what they've been up to and kinda catch up with what's been happening on the television show. But last night we saw Courtney really get into Kim's shit. Uh, she dug her nails into Kim. Kim and Courtney were fighting, and I'm on Team Courtney. I feel like Courtney Kardashian is the family member that doesn't really put the fame and the fortune as her first priority. Okay, we know that Kim, Kylie, and Chloe are like thirsty. Okay, they're thirst buckets. Okay, they want all the fame, they want all the money, they all want to be billionaires, they all want to do this, they want to do that. And Courtney, I think her main priority is her family. She wants to raise her children, she wants to find love, she wants to be vegan, she just wants to do her. And sometimes her personality type and her goals and aspirations as just being a mom and a vegetarian doesn't align well with Kim who wants to be some big fashion icon and a lawyer. So a lot of the times they'll be like, bitch, you need to get up, you need to start a business, you need to do this, you need to do glam, you need to want to film. And Courtney don't want to do all that. She don't want to be on the show no more. She don't want to film. She doesn't want to, you know, get glammed every day. She just doesn't want to do all the extra bullshit that Kim and the other girls want to do. And that's okay, they're different people. Some people are stay at home moms where they just wanna raise kids and then some people are boss ass bitches, i.e. Kylie and Kim Kardashian. I feel like a lot of the times Chloe and Kim pick on Courtney. okay? And it is what it is, they pick on her, Courtney gets fed up and then that's where you have a situation where Kim is karate chopping Courtney across the room and it's a whole hot ass mess. But I did wanna put up this tweet right here of some fan going in on Courtney being like, bitch, you need to get off the show if you're not gonna wanna film and all of this type of stuff. And she was basically like, girl, I already did quit, bye. Um, so there you have it, it is official. Courtney Kardashian is no longer on the show. I don't know if she's gonna be shown on the rest of season 18 that's currently airing, but it'll be interesting how everything plays out without Courtney Kardashian. But this is my advice to the producers of that show. Y'all really need to get Kendall and Kylie to appear more if Courtney is no longer on there because Courtney, you know, she served the purpose as like an antagonist. She was always going back and forth with Kim and Chloe. So if Kim and Chloe don't have nobody to go back and forth with anymore, we're gonna need to see Kylie more. We need to see Kendall more. We need something, okay, that's gonna keep us interested. Kudos to Courtney for standing her ground and really getting Miss Kim 
in her place. Okay, last but not least, I want to talk about Rihanna, and this is just going to be a quick 30-second rant. Um, bitch, you tried it, okay? You tried it, ho. That shit ain't work. You tried it, ho. Shout out to the City Girls. You tried it, Rihanna, because guess what? You said in 2019 that album was dropping. You fucking lied, okay? So now we can pin you as a liar. And on top of that, you released a song with Party Next Door. Um, the Party Next Door album came out. And Rihanna is featured on one of the songs. I think it's called Believe It. I heard the song. The song was cute. It's a bob. I'm going to add it to my playlist. I'm going to play it in my car. But the bitch only had five lines on the song. So everybody on Twitter is going in. Girl, we're, we're not playing with you in 2020, okay? Now that this coronavirus has kind of, you know, fucked this year up, this is the perfect time to be dropping music and to be dropping shows for the streaming services, Hulu and all that. This is the perfect time to be dropping shows. This is the perfect time to be dropping music because everybody is quarantined. Everybody is self-isolating. Everybody is in their house. So we need shit to listen to and watch. Drop that album, Riri, because we're not playing with your ass. If you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I will be back later with an all new video. Comment down below about everything that we talked about today. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.